Hey kids, welcome to another math video and hooray, we made it to module five. Yay, love this module. Everything in it is super cool. Uh, it's always nice to get away from fractions and decimals and all that, although we'll be using them on number lines and multiplying to find volume. So soon enough, we'll get there. But lesson one starts out super cool, uh, just counting cubes and really using logic to figure out where the cubes are. So it's a fun one. Uh, this is module five, fifth grade Eureka Math lesson one homework. And at the bottom of the page, as always, the uh, objective is written there. Explore volume by building with and counting unit cubes. Um, I do have unit cubes in my class, and I hope you have them in yours if you're a subscriber, and that you had a chance to play with them today and build and see uh, what's happening when cubes are hiding behind something. Now, one of the big concepts here is that cubes can't float. So that's going to help you with your explanation here on your homework today. So let's get to it. The following solids are made up of one centimeter cubes. Watch out for that on a test. If they change it from one centimeter to another number, you'll have to calculate that in. Find the total volume of each figure and write it in the chart below. Easy peasy. Here's one cube. Here's one cube. We have two cubes. The volume of figure A is two centimeters cubed. Now, write it like this. Don't put the three exponent next to your two. If you did change it, you need to fix that, make it better. So basically, this is if you're trying to use the formula, which I know a lot of students love to do, the formula is always going to be length times width times height. But you can only use that when you have a regular rectangular prism, not when it's irregular, okay? Because we are multiplying things. So if you're going to repeat it, this is regular, this is not. Um, so if you do use it, it would be a 2 by 1 height, okay, and 1 across. So if you want to use the formula for this one, you can, but basically it's just two cubes next to each other, okay? Two cubes side by side is fine. You're just explaining it and you're showing that, hey, I do see. And remember, uh, we did talk with... Uh, in my class about seeing the faces of the cubes. So don't let it throw you if you don't see a full square. This is still the same, uh, the same cube on the right. So this is my cube here, top of the one cube, side of the one cube, front of the one cube. So that's what you're seeing there. And then this other one, the two pieces are actually one cube. So I hope that coloring helps you you should maybe keep color handy. Anyway, moving right along. B, so we've got one, two, three, four. We can see them, four centimeters cubed. It's a row of three cubes on the bottom. So we're gonna talk a little bit about layers and then one on top. Okay, so it's basically like a three plus one. If you wanna put a calculation in there, you can. How about for C? Well, you can use your length times width times height if you want, or you can describe it in two uh, pieces, or it's like two layers of three. And so if you can count those, then two times three is six. Six centimeters cubed. And however you see, you could say, well, I see two here and two here and two here. And so it's three stacks of two. That's fine too. You can explain it the way you see it. So two rows of three or three columns of two. Okay, so either way, we're working with like a two times three for this one because it's only one row deep. Now for D, I've got two and two. And then there are two back here because these two are not floating. So that is also six centimeters cubed. And you can put three groups of two if you'd like. Um, you can put like the top and the bottom. There are two on the top, two in the front, and then two hidden in the back. Um, if you want to specify that you are saying, hey, I know what's on the bottom and the back, you could write something about that. That might not be a bad thing. Three groups of two. Um, 
just remember there are the two in uh, the bottom back row. So say something about that so that you're expressing, hey, I know what's happening back there. Same thing back here, or you can use your formula. This is a right rectangular prism. It's all even. Um, and so what do we have here if you use the length times width times height? I tend to say length this way, width this way. Um, you can do what you like as long as you're consistent. Height for me is always kind of more the up down. But in some of the lessons, we're going to talk about shifting and turning the shapes. So I've got basically a three by two by two. So length times width times height. And if you use your order of operations and we work our way left to right, you can solve it mathematically or you can just count it. You can also count four in a slice and do like I talk in my class about a loaf of bread. And then this is like a slice, four in a slice, four times three is 12. So uh, three times two would give you six, but six times two is 12. You're going to hopefully end up with 12 either way. And you can use the formula or you can describe what you see. You can do the four on the end and then three slices. That can be one of your ways or you can have like six in the top layer. It's how you see it and then two layers. So however you see it, you describe it. And then for F, we have a slightly larger right rectangular prism. So again, you can use the formula four by two by two. And so then you have eight times two for 16. And that can be your uh, answer and your description. Again, same thing, it's four on the end, but four slices this time, or eight in a layer and two layers. So is it layers of a cake or slices of bread? I don't know, but it's all about food for me. So uh, you can repeat that and just do eight on top layer, two layers. Or the four on the end and then four slices. Okay, whatever you want. You don't have to have all these, but if you do write them all, that hopefully will help you understand. All right, the top of the back is drawing. This can be very challenging for some kids, so don't sweat it if you're really struggling or can't quite get it. Um, some students who do super poorly with calculations will do fantastic with drawing, and so they're like, yay, I'm really good at something. It's very exciting. So uh, if you're not quite sure what to do, you can watch, and uh, I'll try to coach you through. It says draw a figure with the given volume on the dot paper. So three cubic units is your total. So we're gonna have to connect a lot of dots to make these three cubic units. You can make them look any way you want. You could have a tall tower, like one, two, three. Notice that I just went one, two, three lines. I'm gonna close my cube with a V on the bottom. And I'm gonna connect the front edge with three more pieces. And then I'm gonna connect the front right edge with three pieces. When you talk about making the V, that's how you get your parallel top edge. And to put the stop on your three cubes, I put a lid or a roof onto our tower. Now, how do you close this off? Parallel lines. Parallel with the left side, parallel here, and then to close it off, it goes up and parallel with your top and your bottom. That's three cubic units. Can you do um, more? Can you do it flat or coming down this way? Yes, you can. It does not matter as long as you have three. You can even stack up two and then have one off to the side. That's totally fine. Uh, so six cubic units, and again, you can kind of build it any way you like. You might want to try for something that's a little bit more fun um, or challenging, as the case may be. So let's say I have three cubes here. You can even dare to put the top on one. Okay, but what if I want to go back this way? 
Okay, so I'm drawing only the front face so I, I can make sure I'm counting correctly. So I have this front, and remember, when you see things in front, you might be blocking what's behind it. So be careful. So if I have one cube here and one cube here, that's two, and then this is the third, four, I only have room for two more because I need six. So what if I wanted to stack one up this way? I'm drawing the front face just on top of this front face, okay? And um, the only way I would see this side is if I don't have a cube right here, okay? So if I stack it up, and this is my top, remember put the, the roof on the top if you wanna uh, be finished with that. Okay, so what do I have? I have one, two, three, this front corner piece, four here, five, I need six. Where am I gonna put my sixth one? Well, since I already put the roof on this one, I'm not gonna build it up here. I'm not gonna build it up here because I've already finished off my line. So I could stick it over here on the edge. And then, what? It, where's the top of it? Well, it goes back that way, okay? Now, if you really wanna see how it looks, you would color your cubes and say, well, this is the front face, and this is the top of that one. I can only see that little portion there, okay? If you wanted to have your bottom cube here, well, okay, I can see that one, but that's a different cube from the one that's on top. The one that's on top is the only one on the second story, so you could make that a different color. So anyway, you can get pretty complicated. I, don't, I would say only if you feel really confident with drawing, try to make something complicated like this. Otherwise, stack them up and make a tower each time until you're very comfortable with your drawing. Uh, especially if it's like 12 and you're trying to get more units, keep it in a right rectangular uh, prism and just try to do something like the loaf of bread or the uh, cake on the previous page. So if it has 12 cubic units, you can make a variety of rows and columns. So if I do like one, two, three, okay. And I can go back this way. Remember that's still the front cube. So this is not, um, not an additional cube. So I have one, two, three, Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Let's make six. Okay, and now I can see six cubes, at least right here in the front. But what if I wanna have a, a stack of because if I have six cubes on the bottom, I can put one on top of each one. So I would go up another row. Okay, and you can do what you like. But now I have two rows, okay? And then seal this off with the top part, remember the roof is gonna go up and down. We're gonna have to count these all when we're done. Make sure we have the right number of cubes. Now, where do you put the lines? Well, I have to connect it with this one. Um, when I say connect, I mean draw a parallel line to. So parallel, parallel. What about this front one? Make it parallel to this side because we already have this parallel line here. Parallel here, parallel here. So if I were to count by twos, I'd say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And I see that I have 12 cubic units in my little arrangement here. And again, that's a little bit more complicated. If you wanted to keep it in a, a tower or just a row, you can do as many as you can. Count carefully. Uh, so that you have 12. Okay, all right, next one. John built and drew a structure that has a volume of five cubic centimeters. His little brother tells him he made a mistake because he only drew four cubes. Help John explain to his brother why his drawing is accurate. So if we see this one, and again, the coloring can really, really help. If you put the color on the faces that you see, if, 
especially if you spend some time building with your cubes in class. Okay, then you can see the different colors of the cubes. Will you be able to see all the cubes? No, because why? The one behind these front three, but the one that's holding up your top cube cannot be seen. Okay, so this cube is not floating. Very important to remember that cubes don't float. So tell the brother, help John explain to his brother, the top cube is sitting on another cube. Cubes can't float. Okay, and so that's the big idea here is if you see one in a second layer, it is sitting on one whether you can see it or not. Cubes can't float. There is one below. Okay, that can be a, an explanation. So, um, oh, don't forget to click and subscribe and come and Come back again. Okay, draw another figure below that represents a structure with a volume of five cubic centimeters. They want you to get away from something regular that might be, you know, uh, you can still do a tower, but what if you did something more like this, where you say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to branch out and I've got, say, two this way, or maybe three this way, and then don't forget, you can, if it's one story, you can start with those front faces. And then when you're ready to put the lid on, it goes up and down like a roof. Okay, I've only made four here. And we need a fifth one. You can go off this way or you can go off this way. Uh, since I already put the roof on, I'm going to have to keep one story. Um, oops. Keep one story, so add it to an end. One, two, three, four, five. And there would be five. And you can do any kind of thing you want. You can have a tower of five. Uh, but I hope watching the drawing is helpful. Uh, it is important from the faces standpoint that you can identify what a cube looks like when you can see sometimes only two, sometimes three faces. So I hope this is helpful. Come back again, click subscribe. We'll see you on another video. Bye for now.